to sustain a long and successful career as a major league pitcher, you need more than just a great arm. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Intelligence. It's a great weapon and one that has kept the Nationals' Max Scherzer and the Padres' Yu Darvish among baseball's elite pitchers throughout their careers. For Scherzer, he's earned his three Cy Young Awards with dominant performances that feature an amazing command of the strike zone. Paint! Max Scherzer drops 96 on the outside edge. For the crafty Yu Darvish, success has come from utilizing a pitch mix that consistently baffles hitters. That's strike three. Yu Darvish has got it going on at San Diego. Tonight, two of baseball's brightest take to the hill, aiming to outsmart their opponents. May the best mind win. Welcome you to Petco Park in San Diego as the fans make their way in for game four of a four game series between the Washington Nationals and the San Diego Padres. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Mark Grant. Welcome to Padres Baseball. We have a marquee pitching matchup for you tonight. Max Scherzer matched up against you, Darvish, for the finale. On paper, this has the makings of a pitcher's duel because these two pitchers going tonight have been in the big leagues for a long, long time, and they have proven that they're worth at the big leagues for many, many years. These two guys, you Darvish and Max Scherzer. So Max Scherzer, 36 years old, still putting it together a 3-1-7 ERA for 14 seasons. You Darvish, on the other hand, all those years in Japan, coming over to the States, nine seasons, a 3.40 ERA. So, yes, on paper, this should be a good one. Let's talk about you at home. Hey, home is where the heart is. He loves the mound here at Petco Park. He's got really good numbers, too. The 2-1-2 ERA, 11.5 Ks per nine, and it's whipped below one. Incredible. And the 88 strikeouts at home, at home, was my Padre fire to the All-Star break because of that cutter, that curveball, that slider. He's got it all working. Hopefully it carries over to tonight against the Nationals. Max Scherzer on the other side. 36-year-old veteran. This guy is incredible. Now, when you look at his numbers, now he is on pace to have one of his greatest seasons ever at 36 years old. 2-1-0 ERA. If the season were to end today, that'd be the best in his career. A whip below one. The whiff rate, unbelievable. This guy is a closer for nine innings. Each inning he goes out there, it's like he's closing out a ball game. Coming up, why Manny might crush Max. Could Manny take Scherzer deep tonight? Bob Scanlon has a look at what he does well. Next, we return on Valley Sports San Diego. Scherzer getting ready for the final game of this four game set between the Padres and the Nationals. The three time Cy Young Award winner has been firing fastballs for 14 years. But as you can see by the 194 batting average against the fifth best in all of Major League Baseball, he can still rush it up there with the best of them at 94 miles an hour, and maybe even more importantly, with great command. But the Padres, if they have their way, are going to be able to put some pressure on the veteran right-hander, and there's one Padre in particular that might be able to do it, Manny Machado. Not only is he one of the hottest hitters for the Friars right now, having five hits in the last two games, but as you can see, his 391 well hit average against fastballs is the best in all of Major League Baseball. And whether it's a fastball upstairs like this one that he can put into the seats or whether he has to go down low for a good fastball at the knees and drive it into the gap, Manny can get to it. And Manny is going to try to get to Max Scherzer tonight along with the rest of the Padres as they swing it to the max. Can they get some runs against Max Scherzer and finish this final game of the series with a W? We'll find out. Padres Nationals first pitch coming up next right here on Valley Sports San Diego. by Petco, official partner of the San Diego Padres. By Saquon Casino, watch the Padres all season long at Saquon Casino Resort with exclusive prizes, game tickets, and more. By Nissan, choose Nissan today for great offers and a most exciting lineup ever. Shop NissanUSA.com. And by Jack in the Box, remember the Padres hit a home run tonight. You get a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with the purchase of a large drink. The Padres and the Nationals wrapping up their four-game series from Petco Park in San Diego. 
Another beautiful night in San Diego and it's time now for our weather report brought to you by HES Solar. It is 73 degrees, 7 miles per hour, the breeze from the west southwest, and partly cloudy. The forecast for the rest of the night. Only a few clouds are around the ballpark as we get it started. Let's check out the visiting Washington Nationals starting lineup for Dave Martinez after their big win last night in game three of the series. Alcides Escobar has had a very good series, is at second base, leading it off. Trey Turner is at shortstop with Juan Soto in right. Josh Bell is at first base with Starlin Castro at third. Deion Gomes does the catching with Josh Harrison in left. Victor Robles in center field bats eighth, and Max Scherzer, the pitcher, out of the ninth spot for the Nats. On the mound for the Padres is Hugh Darvish. Making his 18th start, second career against the Nationals. Last couple times out, going six innings. Very good numbers. For Hugh Darvish, the strikeouts 123 and 102 innings. Stepping up to the plate, I'll see these Escobar. Stepping up to the mic, the voice of the Padres. Don Orsillo. Don, take it away. Thanks very much, Mudley. Here we go. The finale of the four game series. And the first pitch of this one he is going to miss for ball one. Underway from Petco Park tonight. First of two series in this homestand right before the All Star break. Escobar just joining the team prior to this series in five games, hitting at 381. And he's played very well defensively. He's been a very good addition. Oh. Right back to Darvish, and he makes the catch. You says no. I'm not sure he caught that or it caught him, but either way, out number one for you, Darvish. I think this ball found his glove. Let's check it out. The follow through, the hot smash. Oh, he totally looks away, puts his <laughs> glove up in self defense. And then watch his reaction. But it's in my glove? Really? Gold glove material right there. <laughs> one out. There's Trey Turner. And that'll miss for ball one to Turner. Batting out of the two spot for the Nats. 317 to start the night. 15 homers, 39 runs batted in. They got the late day sunshine going on on the field right now. The pitcher's mound and home plate in the sunshine. There are parts of the outfield and parts of the infield that are covered in shadows. Yeah, I think the most difficult after seeing the sun right there is going to be third base to first base throw for Eric Hosmer. He's a drive to deep left field, sending Fan back at the wall. That ball is gone. A home run. Trey Turner hits his 16th of the year in the Nationals. Off to the fast start, a solo home run here in the first inning. You know, we talked about location of the fastball last night from Chris Paddock. Trey Turner gets the key. And the key here is the bad location of the forcing fastball. He wanted it down away. It's middle in above the belt buckle and Trey Turner. Boy, look at him stay on that nice level swing and the kid puts a charge into this one. Now his second home run of this series and talking it over with your brother. As here is with one out Juan Soto who will take strike one. So adjustment of the fastball location for you Darvish. That one leaked middle in. It was a big time miss. Soto at 282 with 11 homers and 42 runs batted in. That's out of the three spot in the order. And on the ground and it's under the glove of Manny Machado on the shift on the left side and Soto is aboard with one out here in the first inning. Second hit of this first inning for the Nats. Well, we've seen the opposite field power for Soto with the home runs. This one here, it's a breaky ball. Chops down on top of it. Just out of the reach of Manny. There's that son I was talking about. Eric Hosmer at first base. Gonna be a battle. Yeah. They want to think twice about throwing over there, too. I'm not sure Hosmer can see it. He is trying to shade his eyes from the sunshine, but it is very much in his eyes as Josh Bell steps to the plate 249 12 homers and 41 runs batted in hey. 
Thank you. There's that sun peeking through that top deck. And right into the eyes of the Padres first baseman, Eric Hosmer. Going to be there for a little while, too. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 2. Yeah, if you get the call on the breaking ball down out of the zone, go back down there. You, Darvish, can do that with the best of them. And that next pitch, sure, out of the zone, you got to protect and swing at it. Dealing with Josh Bell, last 18 games, hitting at 350. The switch hitting first baseman who's acquired last year from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Five seasons as a Pirate, the National League All Star in 2019. Osmer holding on. Soto at first with one away. Here's a one two pitch to Bell. Fly ball, center field, sending Grisham back onto the dirt of the track to make the catch. Two down and back to first goes Soto. Defense tonight as Trent Grisham gives it a look after catching that one. Tommy Pham in left, Will Myers in right. On the infield, Machado at third, Tati Senior Jerk, Cronenworth at the Keystone, Hosmer at first base, putting on the signs as always. For you, Darvish, Victor Caratini. Darvish and Caratini, the battery for the Friars tonight. Two down, Soto at first, and it brings up Starlin Castro. Ball one. Castro getting another start at third base. He has in all four games of this series. 268 average, three homers, 37 runs batted in for Castro. Veteran who has become a very versatile infielder, second year with the Nationals. He's a four time All Star. And you may remember he made his major league debut back in 2010 at the age of 20. He's been hitting well, and he lines this one out of the reach of Machado. Quickly into the left field corner. As Soto's headed for third, he'll be stopped there into second with a double goes Starlin Castro. Sharply hit and quickly to the left field corner. And it's second and third with two outs in this first inning for Washington. Oh, yeah, the Nationals have uh, seen this act before defensively as this ball is rifled. There's the breaking ball into the left field corner. Everybody's lining up with two outs. The runner is going. Soto gets to third. Bob Hanley, the third base coach, stop sign. Saw a great relay the other night that cut down a run at home plate. And it was Starlin Castro who was very out at the plate. So two down, second and third. Here's Jan Gomes, the veteran catcher. At 268, eight homers and 31 runs batted in. Third season with the Nationals. All star in 18 final out of the World Series and championship he caught the final out in uh, 2019 for the Nationals championship. It was such a weird year for the Nationals. Uh, oh yeah. They were really bad until deep into May when things started to turn around. A tale of three seasons that year for the Nats. Remember we were in there in mid May in their bullpen. ERA was in the mid sevens, yes. almost eight. Horrible. Really bad. 19 and 31 at one point during the season. Wow. They end up hoisting the trophy when it was all said and done. Now, if you do that last year in a uh, 60 game season, you are really finished. Yeah. <laughs> Not going anywhere. And there for a strike in, it's two and one. CB Buckner, the home plate umpire, giving that low strike out of the zone. We've seen that a couple times from you, Darvish. Two one is slap foul to the screen. Well, it's time for the Kia player profile. We've got a marquee pitching matchup going on here tonight. Most starts allowing one earned run or fewer 
You Darvish on top with Jacob DeGrom at 18, and then Max Scherzer, the national starter tonight at 17. Time with Lance Lynn and Corbin Burns. That's since 2020, beginning of last year. 2 2 fouled off to the right, and we'll do it again. When you talk about both these pitchers, you, you think strikeouts, you think good defense behind these two pitchers. Not a lot of slugging, although in this game already with the Nats on the board, the home run from Trey Turner. And we've seen you, Darvish, turn it around after a home run and an extra base hit. He's had to work hard in this first inning. These are taxing pitches with runners at second and third, two down, a run in. 2 2 is lined into center field. Soto will score from third. Castro is going to try and score. He will. Two runs are in, and it is now 3 to nothing. Nationals on top, and again, they have a big first. This time, it's against you, Darvish. Gomes goes down to get this pitch here out of the hand of you, Darvish. Caratini wants it down and away, and it leaks down and in below the strike zone at 95. Gomes just drops the head there just out of the reach of Jake Cronenworth. And with two outs, crack of the bat, off and running. And a crooked number here in the first. So Gomes coming up with a big hit to drive in a pair. And here is the seventh member of the Nationals to bat in the first inning. It's Josh Harrison, who hits the start in left field again. He came in to play second base at one point last night and swinging a miss for strike one. Very uncharacteristic for you, Darvish, because when you take a look at the numbers, first through the lineup for Darvish, opponents hitting 119. Already one, two, three, four. Four for six in the first inning. Four hits and three quick runs in the first inning. Starts have been fast for the Nationals mm -hmm. in this series. They had a 5 0 lead in the first game before the Padres came back to tie it up 5 5, only to lose 7 5. And then, of course, the fast start they had last night against Chris Paddock. This one, car foul off to the right out of play. And you have to think about who you're opposed or uh, who the opposing pitcher is, rather, Max Scherzer. But once again, even the great ones have uh, shaky starts. One two pitch to Harrison. One hopper to short. Tatis will go the easy way to second for the force out. That will end the inning, but the damage done. The Nationals get three off you, Darvish, in the first. The Nationals scoring three times in the first. Padres will try to answer here in the bottom of the first inning. Check out the Padres starting lineup for Jace Tingler, brought to you by Mozzie Heating, Air, and Solar. Tommy Pham leads it off. He is in left field with Fernando Tatis Jr. at shortstop. It is Jake Cronenworth at second base out of the three spot with Manny Machado at third. Trent Christian in center field. Eric Hosmer's at first base, batting sixth. Will Myers is in right with Victor Caratini doing the catching. And Hugh Darvish, the pitcher out of the nine spot for San Diego. On the mound for the Nationals already. With a 3 nothing lead is Max Scherzer. 36-year-old, three-time Cy Young Award winner, seven-time All-Star. Unbelievable that he did not make the All-Star team this year. That's another story. And Max Scherzer, World Series champ, of course, with the Nats. And as Don mentioned, the three spot versus the Padres pitched quite well. 12th career start against the Padres with a 1-2-7 ERA. Quickly 0 and 2 to Tommy Pham. 251, nine homers and 29 runs batted in. Pham has hit safely in 17 of his last 24 games. Last 24 games hitting at 318. Got a hit in last night's game, a double.
Takes the slider and it's two and two. You know, I mentioned that one two seven ERA against the Padres for his career. Three and zero record. Sixty three strikeouts and just five walks in six starts for Max Scherzer against San Diego. Hold off to the right out of play. Defense for the Nationals behind Max Scherzer in the outfield. Josh Harrison in left, Victor Robles in center, and Juan Soto in right on the infield. Starlin Castro at third, Trey Turner at short. Alcides Escobar at second. Josh Bell will be at first base. Behind the plate, Jan Gomes catching Max Scherzer. Scherzer and Gomes, the battery for the Nats. Shoots this one foul just outside of first. Kind of a late swing. Very defensive swing there for Pham. Fernando Tatis Jr. will be next, then Jake Cronenworth will be along as part of the spot of the first inning for the Padres, trying to put together some sort of answer to the three run top of the first for the Nats. Let's take a look at StatCast powered by Google Cloud. And what's in the toolbox of uh, Max Scherzer this year, 2021, and the usage, the four seamer? We've seen that the fam. Slider changeup, you know, in cutter and a curveball, you know, occasionally, kind of like an, a look see pitch early. You can see the general locations the majority of the time when he throws those pitches. He'll go up the ladder with the fastball. There's a changeup we just witnessed. Didn't go. Check with Chad Fairchild, first base umpire. But the thing about Max Scherzer is location. We preach that all the time. Location of the fastball, he does that quite well. Swing and a miss, and Pham strikes out. So Scherzer got ahead of him 0 2, went full before striking out Pham, one down. 3 2, and he went with the slider. Boy, out of the hand, yes, looks like a fastball right down the middle. You know, Tommy Pham tries to adjust and at least try to follow it off to get another hack at it. Gomes hangs on to that one for his first strikeout. One down here in the first inning. And here is Fernando Tatis Jr. 297, 27 homers, 58 runs batted in. The OPS over 1,000. Now, last night, Fernando was 0 for 3 with a strikeout. So that snaps an 11 game hitting streak. Since safely down 11 of his last 12 games and hitting at 377 in the last. 12 games and kind of straightens him up with that pitch in. Swing and a miss, and it's two and one. Boy, Max Scherzer's arm swing out of his glove up on top and through is so quick. I mean, he, he's maximizing his delivery, his body, his physique to get everything behind each pitch. On the ground, down to third, and Starlin Castro. Two down in the first inning. I remember when the Padres hit a home run tonight, you get a free jumbo jack tomorrow with the purchase of a large tray. Two down, last of the first, and it brings up Jake Cronenworth. 78 for Cronenworth to start the night. 12 homers, 34 runs batted in, and a much needed night off last night. Got the game off, 87 games. Still has him tied for the lead. Uh, the most player in Major League Baseball games played with the Texas Rangers, Isaiah Kiner Falefa, and Seattle's Kyle Seeger have played uh, the identical amount of games, 87 so far in the year of the. 90 that the Padres have played. And he'll be going to the All Star game. Change up. We have the benefit of that center field camera we're looking at right there, and I can see inside the glove of Max Scherzer. Gripping that baseball with that changeup grip. Now, obviously, Jake Cronenworth cannot see that as Jan Gomes puts down the signs. To left center field, Robles on the run will dive and make the catch out there in left center. 
Thought it was going to fall, but Victor Robles makes the catch out there to Rob Cronenworth, and the Padres are down in order in the first inning. Nice catch by Victor Robles, fully extended on the dive. Three nothing Nationals. Scherzer loves his defense. He just made a great catch out there in left center field. He is going to lead it off here in the visiting half of the second inning. He's made a couple of very nice catches in this series. That was a fabulous catch, covering the gaps big time. Robles that had gap written all over it. Robles will take a strike, shortened up to show bunt. That's out of the eight spot. The average only at 214 with a home run and 11 runs batted in. Big cut there for strike two. So he was a finalist back in 2019 for the Rawlings Gold Glove Award in the outfield. But uh, did not win a Gold Glove, but you never know, this could be the year. Sure. Based on what we've seen. Yeah. Very impressive. Well, the uh, that gold is here in center field at Petco Park, and that's uh that's Trent Grisham. He's got that on his mantle. He's got the gold label on his glove. A couple of good center fielders in this series. A couple of good shortstops. He gets hit a lot. He was hit nine times last year. Since the start of 2019, he ranks second in Major League Baseball. Hit by 44 pitches. Wow. I mean, he's not on top of the plate no. like Turner or anything. Justin Turner, that is. Yeah. What the Craig Vigio is going on? Yeah, I'm a little surprised that he gets hit that much. Yeah. Maybe the scouting report is uh, I have to take a look at his hot zone. Uh, you got to get in. Maybe, yeah, maybe you got to get in on him and then uh, some get away. And, you know, I, I think there's somewhat of an art to taking a pitch in the shoulder or maybe in the leg. 2 2 is fouled off. I know when I was a kid, Don Baylor was yeah. hit on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, some guys when they turn in, they'll they'll, they'll go away. Mm -hmm. Some guys just kind of pivot to where they just turn, and that shoulder actually gets in. The, you know what I'm saying? So they're given the effort of turning, but not really turning and getting away. I don't know. It's just one of the things that I've seen some hitters do. Popped up left side. Fernando Tatis Jr. will step back and make the catch. So one out here in the second inning. Well, remember. To enter the Sequan Scatter Report sweepstakes, follow at Valley Sports SD on Twitter and reply to tonight's Sequan Scatter Report with more or less using the hashtag Sequan Scout. Visit ValleySports.com for full rules and details. You Darvish and Max Scherzer are both among the NL leaders in innings. If you think both starters will combine for 12 innings or more, reply more. If you think they will combine for less than 12 innings, reply less. Pitch in there for a strike to Max Scherzer. It was 0 for 28 at the plate this year, and in his 14th major league season, a 180 average. Ground ball, shortstop Fernando to his left, two down. So he has either made the put out or helped with an assist. The first two outs of this second inning. Takes us to the top of the order. And Alcides Escobar, second time through, coming up here now for you, Darvish. Escobar hit a line drive right back at you, Darvish, in the first. Darvish made the catch. Now he shows bunt and jumps back out of the way of a pitch in. It was a fastball at 93 in. A little run to it. Falling behind 2 and 0. Oh. Darvish coming in individually at 7 and 3 with a 2.65 ERA. 18th start in a Padres uniform for you, Darvish. Numbers at Petco Park and at home, very good for Darvish. Very good all year, but especially here.
Where'd that miss? Looked like a pretty good pitch. Three zero, and the strike called. No strikeouts yet for Darvish in this game. As he works with two outs in the second, and Trey Turner waiting on deck. He homered in the first inning. Solo shot. On the line at third and a foul ball. When the Padres pitchers K9, your K9 wins. If the Padres strike out nine or more batters in a game, all Padres fans can visit participating Petco locations the next day and receive free dog or cat treats with PALS rewards. Visit Petco.com slash Padres K9 for more details. Darvish has the first two outs here of the second inning. And a full count to Alcides Escobar. Swing and a miss, and there's the first strikeout of the night for you, Darvish. A 1 2 3 second, a 3 0 Nationals lead. Second inning of work where take a look at his arsenal. The four seam fastball, yeah, still the giddy up at 96 in the good location. The slider out of the hand looks like a fastball, and that tilt to it. Now, watch the tilt on this curveball. Straight down. How about the changeup at 84? Great location. That's the big key for Max Scherzer. Not only the location, but every pitch that he throws, same arm slot, same arm speed. It gives the illusion like it's going to be a fastball, but he puts a wrinkle in it, both sides of the plate. And when you talk about active leaders, with most career strikeouts, he's right behind Justin Verlander. 2,911 seeking a 3,000 for a three time Cy Young Award winner, Max Scherzer. Well, ready to match up against Manny Machado, who leads it off here in the bottom of the second inning for the Padres. Line foul as Manny's out ahead. You know, Bob Scanlon did a nice report on Manny Machado and uh, hitting the fastball. And we just talked about the fastball from Max Scherzer. Well, what does he start him off with? Off speed stuff, out in front of it for strike one. Max knows. And Machado drove in the Padres' first run of the game in last night's contest, RBI single in the fifth. He's been walking a lot as well. 41 walks this year, ranked second on the team, only behind Tommy Pham, who has walked 47 times. He is second in home runs behind Fernando as Machado with 15 heading into tonight's game. Sits safely in 17 in the last 21. Thing is, when he makes contact, it is usually hard. His average exit velocity, 93.8 miles per hour, that leads the National League. He barrels up consistently. Mm -hmm. He could be out in front. It's amazing, Don. We've seen him many times. The body's out in front, hands are back. He'll sweep that bat through the zone. Keep that, you know, the body might drift, but if the body drifts, the hands stay where they're at, and then bang, explodes there. He barrels it up consistently. There have been swings this year, Will, as we take a look at the hard hit rate you're just talking about, Fernando Tatis Jr., Manny Machado. There's Goldie. And um, there's been times balls off the bat, you're thinking, okay, it's hitting the air, that I'm not thinking it's going to go that deep, and it's a home run. Did he go? No. I check with Chad Fairchild, first base umpire. He's able to hold up. Pitch was in. What do you think? Well, that bat barrel went uh, <laughs> in front of his hands, didn't it? <laughs> it did. Two balls, two strikes. Wow. Strike three call. Second strikeout for Scherzer. He's retired the first four Padres he's faced tonight. Wow. You know, I remember Max Scherzer with the Diamondbacks, with the Tigers. He had the good stuff. But coming over to Washington, you look at his walks, they went down big time. And it, it's predicated on the location of the fastball. So he can put it where he wants. Absolutely. That's pinpoint right there.
How has this guy not made the All Star team this year? That's a great question. One out in the second inning. And Trent Grisham. And he comes in with an ERA of 2.10. 17th start of the year for Scherzer. As Grisham's numbers 11 homers, 33 runs batted in for Trent. Homer in the ninth inning last night. For his 11th home run of 2021. They shift on him on the right side. Teams have been doing this. Castro, the third baseman, joins Escobar and Bell on the right side for the Nationals. Goes over the shift and drives one to right center, but room for Robles. Makes the catch out there for out number two. Here comes Eric Cosmer. Osmer also had a home run in last night's game. In the sixth inning, his seventh home run of the year. Multiple hits in each of his last three starts. Takes strike one. Sits safely in 13 of the last 16 games, and in the last 16 games, hitting at 315. Trying to crowd him. That looked like a cut fastball from Scherzer in, up and in, moving him a little bit after a fastball down and in. Fly ball headed to left field, and Josh Harrison moves over and makes the catch in front of Robles. It's a one, two, three second. Play two, three nothing, Washington. Trey Turner back in the first inning hits his 16th home run of the year. Goes 384 feet, exit velocity at 99 miles per hour, and the launch angle at 29 degrees. He packs some punch, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Does everything well, really. To center and in for a base hit. Not waiting around. Sounded like it was towards the end of the bat. Yeah. But uh, he gets it out to left center field, and Turner is two for two. Is that a snappage? Yeah, I think so. Off the end of the bat, Donnie. Good call. Uncle Snappy in the house. You can hear it. Yeah. He will sacrifice that shillelagh for a big league knock. Big runner on for the Nationals. First time in this game, and it brings up Juan Soto. So the Padres going to shift on the right side, but with the runner at first, they keep it tight to the infield. And it is Tatis, Cronenworth, and Hosmer on that right side. Strike call. Soto doesn't think so. Yeah, it's been an inconsistent <laughs> zone up to this point, even though uh, two innings in the books. CB Buckner calling the balls and strikes tonight, and uh, Juan Soto. Saying some stuff. Let's see how Darvish pitches him here. Remember that hit to the opposite side, just under the glove of Machado. That was in the first inning. See if he tries to crowd him a little bit more. This at bat. A lot of stuff going on in that batter's box for Soto, right? Getting set. Mm -hmm. Takes that big stride out in front, out of the box, and then uses that bat to measure where his back foot's going to go from home plate. Runner goes at first. The pitch is a ball. The throw down is going to be late. Stolen base for Trey Turner. He can do that too. He's got very good speed. Chalk up another one, number 19 for the national shortstop. But he was starting to lean that way. Pretty good jump as well. And speed, yes, he's got that too. And a nice job by Fernando. Even though he stays on that tag, the pop up slide. Keep the tag on him. He might come off a little bit. So Turner in scoring position with nobody out here in the third inning for the Nats. That was the 39th stolen base for the Nationals. 
Turner's got 19 of them. Yeah, he's truly the one guy you really have to worry about yeah. from a running standpoint. Yeah. And he's already stolen second base here. With nobody out in the third. Darvish with a 1 1 to Soto. On the ground and diving is Fernando. It's off his glove and into shallow left. So Turner will take third. And a wide turn at first base for Soto, but he'll retreat to the bag and runners at the corners for the Nationals here in the third inning. Again, Soto going the opposite way. Off the heel of the glove. Uh, you know what? Even even though Turner gave the stop sign or uh, Henley gave the stop sign, I thought Turner was going to go for it. But remember, that's Fernando Tatis Jr. has got one heck of a hose out there at shortstop. He got to that ball. And plus with nobody out, you don't want to take that chance. So first and third, nobody out. And here is Josh Bell. Line out to center field in the first inning. So we're going to foul tip into the catcher's mitt for strike one. Now the Nationals offensively have been uh, pretty good in this series. It really opened the eyes of the Padres and some tough. Pitching for the Padres in this series yeah. as well. Coming into this game, Nationals first in the uh, National League and average 253, sixth in baseball. Not a lot of extra base hits, though, and uh, not really the home run threat as well for the Nats. Rolls it over foul and is down now one and two. Darvish gave up three in the first, had a one, two, three second. He's given up back to back hits here in the third inning, and the Nationals are threatening again with runners at first and third, nobody out. This is kind of where the Padres let the game get away from them last night after three runs yeah. in the first inning by the Nats. Center fielder Grisham over towards left center. That's a green grass in right center. Runner goes at first, pitches foul back to the screen, and that's Soto running there at first base. And now a quick word from the Hohen family of dealerships. The Hohen family of dealerships has served San Diego County since 1975 with seven locations in Carlsbad. Visit HohenMotors.com. Trey Turner with a single. He would steal second before Soto. And a base hit to left center field. First and third, nobody out. And a one-two pitch coming up here to Josh Bell. Fly ball hit well to deep right center field. Back goes Myers, and that ball is going to one-hop the wall. Turner will score from third. Soto will get to third on the RBI double by Josh Bell. The Nationals take a 4 0 lead here in the third inning against you, Darvish. Third straight hit to open up this third inning, and it's an extra base hit for Bell. Well, the Nationals showing off some extra base power. Boy, that's the uh, that's the breaking ball. And as soon as that ball was struck or thrown, you Darvish knew it too. That one ended up right down the middle of the plate. Big time miss. And still nobody out. Second and third with nobody out. And a run in. Here's Starlin Castro. Castro doubled in the first inning, came around to score the third Nationals run. They have added a run since. And he's now riding an 11 game hitting streak at 444. Four doubles, a home run, 10 RBIs, including the double that he had in the first inning. Picked up his 38th RBI and asked for time, steps out, practice cut. Last couple of days, Nationals have been scoring early and often. 
And the case again tonight. Sprayed foul off to the right out of play. Well, they're hitting the mistakes tonight, that's for sure, out of the hand of you, Darvish. There are games when it's taken, swung out and missed, fouled off out of play. I tell you what, the extra base power early on is evident for Washington tonight. Soto at third, Bell at second. Nobody out here in the third inning. Pitch 50 for you, Darvish. It's a two plus. And that is going to miss. Not used to seeing this from you, Darvish. No. Pitch count rising early in this outing. And Jan Gomes, the catcher waiting on deck, he had a two run single as part of that three run first inning. Ball three. Flying open on that one. Arm side up and in missing big time. Line to center and Grisham comes in to make the catch. Tagging at third is Soto. Here comes the throw. It's up the line. And the Nationals take a 5 0 lead. The ball gets away and to third base goes Bell. So off the glove of Caratini, went out towards the mound and taken off. On the miscue goes Bell and the Nationals lead it 5 0. Well, Grisham had this one lined up. This ball is hit well to center field. Once again, down the middle while he leaned on it. Grisham has his momentum coming in. It's the short hop, and then right there, nobody's out in front of the mound there, and the Nationals get another 90 feet. They charge Grisham with that error and make it an E8 on the throw. That's a tough error. That is a tough error. It's not on the mark as far as home plate goes, right. but yeah. it was Caratini off his glove and then out to yeah. the pitcher's mouth. So that's a tough one. Who do you give it to? Yeah. They've, they've given it to the center fielder. You're right. You have to drop it on someone because of the runner taking the extra right. base. Somebody's got to get an uh, yeah, error here. You know what? It, it, even though it does go to Trent, that's a tough one. Yeah. Well, at third with. One out now in the inning, and the infield in. In the air to right field, coming in is Myers. He'll make the catch, tagging, nope, just drawing a throw is Bell. He will bluff and return to third. Two down. Too shallow to try it. Myers was well in by the time he made that catch. So two down, and that'll bring up Josh Harrison. Grounded into the fielder's choice in the first inning. Getting his second look at you, Darvish, who about to throw his 55th pitch. That's in an inning and in, or two innings and in two thirds. This season with two outs and runners in scoring position. Harrison at 226. Swing and a miss for strike one. Strike two. Fastball at 95. Well, the Nationals are swinging it. Yeah, they've been very aggressive. Yes. It's an approach that uh, has worked. Not many mistakes have been uh, gone to the side of you, Darvish. They're hitting a lot of the mistakes. Foul to our right.
into center field a base hit and from third comes Bell. Run number six of the night for the Washington Nationals and driving in this one is Josh Harrison. Well he fought that one off that one was in off the plate it looked like. But Harrison muscling this one is a breaking ball once again mislocation see that Caratini wants it down and away. Just did not get the release point out in front enough. Very frustrating evening for you Darvish. So a tough night for Paddock last night a tough night for Darvish tonight. And it is six nothing right now Nationals on top runner at first. And a toss over there back to the bag is Harrison. Victor Robles popped out of the shortstop here in the second inning. 0 for 1. Darvish falling behind 2 0. Not nailing that cutter down and away, right? Or that, 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 that mm -hmm. slider that he throws. That's it right there. Even though that's a strike, that's the cut fastball. It's not where he wanted it. But when you Darvish is on his game, that slider out of the hand looks like it's going to be a strike down and away for the swing and miss. That cutter on that outside corner. Not tonight. Two and two. at first base with two down this will be the 25th pitch of this inning coming up for you Darvish. And as this lead expands for the Nationals all you can keep thinking about is Max Scherzer is on the other side. He has two perfect innings to start his outing tonight two strikeouts mixed in. Two two is well, should have been strike three but yeah. it's ball three. Looked like a split finger fastball, and this one looks like it catches the zone. He's lined up right on the inside slot. Did not get the call. Swing and a miss, and Darvish is able to strike out Robles, but the damage done. Three more runs for the Nats. They lead it 6 0. Go this beautiful look at America's finest city. Now the gas lamp there tonight. Oh, who's a good boy? It's a good looking pup right there. Husky? I think so. I mean, you know, I'm not one of these judges at uh, the Westminster Dog Show, Kennel Show. We get to bark in the park night yeah. going on, and uh, yeah. You know that Basset Hound. I'd really like to see him with one of those Sherlock Holmes hats and a pipe. I think that'd be really neat. Well Myers leading it off here in the bottom of the third inning. Two fifty two ten homers thirty five runs batted in. Scherzer has retired the first six Padres he's faced, two by way of the K. Striking out Pham and Machado to begin each of the first two innings and jumps ahead of Myers now. One and two. And uh, Max Scherzer once again pounding that fastball, getting ahead one and two here. Location is very, very key. He's getting it down and away, up and away, or he wants it right on the corners. Swing and a miss, and he starts each inning so far. The first three by striking out the first hitter. 
And Pham in the first, Machado in the second. He gets Myers here in the third. He's got it dialed in the fastball location and the slider down and away. One out in the third inning for Victor Caratini. This is interesting. Instead of you Darvish, it is Jorge Mateo who has come out on deck. That action in the pen. There's a ground ball base hit down the left field line. Over to play it is Harrison. And there's the first hit of the night for the Padres. A one out base hit for Victor Caratini here in the third inning. Nice job by Victor getting a Scherzer here. Yeah, you've got to hit it where it's pitched. He can work both sides of the plate with the best of them. You try to pull him, it's a no go. You take that pitch that way, you're on board. Moreno just called up today. And warming in the pen as Darvish is being hit for here. And Mateo will pitch hit. So Darvish done after three innings and 64 pitches, allowing six runs in his three innings of work. Really thought we were going to see a pitcher's duel here tonight. I have you and me both. Very surprising, but the Nationals offensively have been so good in this series. Swing and a miss, off balance, and it's a ball and a strike. Slider again from Max Scherzer. Ball two. Last night snapping it 0 for 20 and a 13 game hitless streak. And there's a pitch in there for strike two. Well, well, with Darvish now out of the game, you know, Camarena warming up, he was a starter down in El Paso, so a guy who can give you innings, right? You hope. Three, four innings, hopefully. Bill Cruz Matt was that guy last night. Yeah. Nick Ramirez also logged some innings. You had Chris Matt. Sent out to El Paso, and you had Nick Ramirez placed on the IL today. Going to be a rotator cuff issue for Nick Ramirez. Time called with one out and one on here in the Padres' third inning. Swing and a miss, and striking out is Mateo. That is strikeout number four for Max Scherzer. Two down here in the third inning. Challenges him off the bench with a fastball right down the middle. Very late on that heater, and a really big two strike swing. Two down, Caratini at first base, top of the order, Tommy Pham. Takes strike one. Under the slider to get it. Pham struck out swinging in the first inning. One of four strikeouts on the night for Max Scherzer.
You know, Don, there's been, uh, regarding you, Darvish, four times this year where you has given up four earned runs, right? Mm -hmm. other, other times, one run, a lot. Two runs, no runs, whatever. But tonight, I don't think I've ever seen him this year so off with his location. Hmm. I mean, he was missing big time. We well, hope that he is okay physically. Sure. And there's not an injury of any kind. Ball and two strikes with two outs here in the third inning. Strike three call. Fam strikes out for the second time of the game. That's five Ks for Scherzer. Six nothing Nationals to the fourth we go. Nationals, a tough night for you, Darvish. And it wasn't just one pitch. They got to fastballs, they got to breaking balls. But what you're going to notice here, I'm going to think, watch where Victor Caratini is set up. Down and away, he leaves it up and out over the plate. Go down and in, he leaves it in the middle of the plate. Trying to go down and in again, leave. Darvish just could not locate any of his pitches tonight, whether it was the fastball, the cutter, the slider, even a couple of curveballs that he tried, was not able to locate. And what's especially frustrating on a night like this, it wasn't a situation where he was behind in the count a lot. In fact, seven of those eight hits came in situations where he was ahead in the count. He was throwing strikes. He just could not put guys away tonight with the location costing him dearly. He's keep you updated in case there's any updated of any injury. On a mud back up to you. All right, Scan, thanks very much as we move along here to the fourth inning. And just called up Daniel Camarena. Welcome back to the big leagues. The local kid from Benita, Cathedral Catholic, USD left hander. Sinker, four seamer, the slider, curveball, and a changeup from the left hander Camarena. Made his major league debut back on June 19th. It's got to be a thrill for him. I mean, even though it's his second time back up, but uh, back in the big leagues, pitching for his hometown team. It takes over for you, Darvish. You went three innings, giving up eight hits, six runs. All the runs are earned. He did not walk anybody. He struck out two. And Darvish ends up throwing a total of 64 pitches in three innings. Very uncharacteristic outing for the right hander, Darvish. Nice curveball there. Strikes out Scherzer for the first out of the fourth inning. Let's have now for our Valley View Casino trivia question. The last Padres pitcher to have 10 or more wins at the All Star break was John Garland, Jason Marquis, Jolice Chassin, or Matt Latos. To enter our Valley View Trivia Sweepstakes, tweet your answer to Valley View Trivia question at Valley Sports SD with the hashtag Valley View Trivia. You have a winner will be announced on next Saturday's post game show. Wow. Visit ValleySports.com for full rules and details. That's a tough one, Donnie. I, I, I'm, I'm going uh, Jolie Chassin. Are you really? Yeah. That's a good choice. Uh, for the heck of it, I'll go Matt Latos. Okay. To the screen, makes it 0 2. So Darvish's three innings pitched are tied for his second fewest in his career. Fewest was two and two thirds, March 30th of 2019. That was in Texas when he was a Cub. Two of those three games in which he worked three or fewer innings have been at Petco Park, oddly enough. First was a three inning effort, September 2nd of 2017, when he was a Dodger against the Padres here at Petco Park. But he has pitched so well at home this year, yeah. so we talked tough about, to figure. Yeah, we talked about that in our game open. On the ground foul outside a third as Escobar up for the third time in this game has lined out to the pitcher and struck out swinging 0 for 2.
Back to back nights here with this crowd. It's been a good crowd but very quiet yeah. as there's not been a lot to cheer about. And the same as last night. And the Nationals jumped on top big and tonight they get three in the first three in the third and have a six nothing lead. This crowd is quiet as you can imagine. Yeah it's amazing and we've seen it throughout baseball forever how the starting pitching for any club sets the tone. For any ball game. It's tough when you get down this big yeah. this early. Yeah. No fun playing catch up. 2 2 is to right. Myers was deep and that's going to drop in. There's a base hit with one out for Alcides Escobar. Try to get the fastball in. Actually, you know what? He wanted that one away. It leaked and he just fights this one off. Boy, Will was playing on the deep side there. You're right, Donnie. One out, one on. Here's Trey Turner. He's two for two. And of course, both of his hits were off Darvish, but home run, solo shot in the first inning, collecting his 16th home run of the year, 40th RBI. And then a single to center in the third inning, stole a base, scored a run in the third. So it's been a very productive game already for the Nationals shortstop. Fly ball center field sending Grisham back onto the dirt of the track. He'll watch it leave. A two run home run for Trey Turner. His second home run of the ball game. And it is eight to nothing Nationals. This one to straight away center field. The Nationals and Trey Turner are crushing mistakes from the pottery pitchers. And once again, he wears the key around the neck for the Nats. Here it is, right down the middle, and he drives it straight away center field. One out base is empty. Here's Juan Soto. Trey Turner having quite the series. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. And Moreno was able to strike out Scherzer, but a single for Escobar, the two run home run by Trey Turner. And it is eight to nothing, Washington. Got that feeling of uh, here we go again yeah. after last night. Yeah. Not fun. Turner with multi home run games, uh, eighth of his career. Third time it's happened this season. In the air to left, where Pham makes his way over towards the line to make the catch for out number two. Now, a quick word from Saquon Casino. Padres fans, surround yourself with everything you love about your team in the new exclusive Padres Hotel Suite. Visit Saquon.com to book your stay. Two down here in the fourth inning. That'll bring up Josh Bell. Nationals got three in the first, three in the third inning, and two so far here in the top of the fourth. Bell fly to center in the first, doubled and scored in the third, and drove in a run. Top seven hitters in the order all have at least one hit, but Trey Turner is leading this offensive charge with three hits and two home runs. Yeah. All right, you know what, Donnie? Uh, I'm going on on a limb again tonight, and, and my proposal is is earlier tonight than it was last night. Okay. Padres come back and win this one. I'm walking from Alpine to Petco. Okay. Yes. I'm with you again tonight. All right, thank you. Yep. Scan you in. I, of course, the right hander's in. Of yeah. course. All right. Absolutely, I'm in. All right. Last night it was like in the sixth, wasn't it? Yes, it was later. Tonight it's in the fourth. I am so hoping for a Padre comeback. 
I want blisters and corns and bad ankles and blown out <laughs> knees and quads. <laughs> Hip replacement. All for Children's Hospital, Rady Children's Hospital here in San Diego. Who's with me? <laughs> 3 1 pitch back to the mound, and Camarena comes down and fires to first base for the out that ends the inning. Two more runs for the Nationals who lead it 8 0. To the bottom of the fourth inning. And the Padres shortstop's coming up, and really the National League is stacked at shortstop this season. Tatis, Turner, Story, Baez, and Crawford. And wow, what Crawford is doing this year. And a real bounce back season for him offensively, but uh, it is a very good collection. At one point, the shortstop spot really didn't have uh, power numbers and uh, big offensive numbers. Well, that's not the case now. Remember the day when it was just all about the glove at shortstop? Yeah. Oh sure. You had the light hitting shortstop, but boy, they could cover some ground. Um, I think that really kind of changed with Cal Ripken starting, yeah. and then you had that whole A Rod, yep. Jeter, Nomar, Tejada. Yep. You know, the whole crew come through that was all about offense. And you know what I did yesterday? I did, I went from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and then 2010 to 2020. I yep. wrote down all the best shortstops, and I threw the list away. Why'd you do that? I don't know. What was the point of doing the list? Because I wanted to talk about the guys who made impacts and even back in the day to where like I think of really, really yeah, you know, here we go. Twenty play remember twenty home runs was a thing? Yeah. Yeah. It was a big deal. And I hope he's watching tonight because I'm gonna poke a little fun at one of my favorite people in baseball. Change up coming right here. Broken bat, foul ball, and the barrel ends up down by Starling Castro at third base. You know, back in the day when you had the light hitting shortstops like Larry Boa. <laughs> I hope he's watching. As he gets into this changeup here and saws saws him off. Wow, that's down right at the label. But uh, all kidding aside, Larry Boa was one of those shortstops, one of the best fielding shortstops of his generation. Mm -hmm. uh, very high fielding percentage. He can get to it. He could, you know. Play the position well. But my point is, and then as time went on, 20, 30, 35 home runs from these guys playing that position. Mark Belanger, I'm going back with the Orioles, right? Mm -hmm. Mark Belanger can field it with the best of them. Two two pitch to Fernando. And that one is fouled back. Well, he'll do it again here, two and two. Wasn't Ripken one of the first like really big shortstops yes. too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there are a lot of guys who followed after him that uh, you know kind of looked up to him and sure. said big guys, and now a lot of them are big guys. Yeah. It was uh, different at the time. Not so much anymore. This one grounded foul. I know I've told this story many times, but I remember the first time I met Troy Tulowitzki down by the batting cage in Colorado. Huge. I could not believe how yep. tall he was yep. and how big he was. How about second baseman today? I mean, look at Jake Cronenworth. Yeah. Big, strong, yeah. good numbers. High drive, deep left field for Fernando. Upper deck. 28th home run of the year for Tatis Jr. Padres on the board in the fourth inning. Hits it off Scherzer to boot. Yep. There's something to cheer about for the Friar faithful at Petco Park tonight. Leave it to Fernando. Mislocation on this one. Leak middle in. Wanted it away. Made him pay. So that is number 28 here before the break.
Fouled off to the left out of play. See how he wanted it down and away. It leaks middle in 96 and he turns it around. Swing and a miss, and Cronenworth strikes out. That's strikeout number six for Scherzer as he bounces back. First out of the fourth inning. There's that breaky ball. Got a piece of it down and in. Low cutter. Home run by Tatis, 433 feet, 113.3 miles per hour. One out, and Manny Machado getting his second look at Scherzer. High fly ball down the left field line, headed towards foul ground and into the seats. Machado struck out looking in the second inning. Six strikeouts for Scherzer in three and a third inning so far for the Nationals right hander. 60th pitch and that one is by Machado 0 and 2. With a fastball at 95. 14th home run now given up by Scherzer in 17 starts this being his 17th to that kid there. Look out, and Machado gets hit. So many hit by the pitch, headed down to first base with one out. Four seamer. Oh, I thought that got him on the uh, the wrist there. I yep. thought it got him on the uh, the tricep area. Yeah, that's a very sensitive area. to the home run by Fernando to start the inning. Here's Trent Grisham. Grisham flied out to center field in the second inning. He is 0 for 1. 4 for 13 in the series now for Grisham. Lined into center field a base hit. Machado will take second, and the Padres have two on with one away. Well, the home run was crushed. That ball up the middle hit very well. Get to it. Hit it on the line. Nice level swing from Grisham. Multiple base runners. And Hosmer coming up. Trying to pass it on to the next guy. Drive one in, possibly. Here's Eric Hosmer. It's Scherzer, 250 the average, has home run off Scherzer. And did he go? Yes, he did. Junior Valentine, third base umpire, said he offered. I can tell you he went from up here, yeah, most definitely. His first time up in the second inning, flight out to left field. Oh. 
One and two. Chato at second, Grisham at first, one out, a run in. Down oh. and in, and Hosmer gets hit. That was a cutter. And this will load the bases for the Padres. Second batter that Scherzer has hit in the inning. Got the back foot. That got him pretty good too, because that wasn't a glancing glove. You see that ball went straight up. Well, time for the Padres to make their move. Well, the conference at the mound here. Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, out. a little visit but calm him down a little bit as the fire faithful make some noise to try to get something going here with El Gallo at the plate. Manny Machado is at third base with Trent Grisham at second base. Eric Hosmer at first one out a run in and Will Myers struck out swinging in the third inning 0 for one tonight. Three grand slams on his resume and a 319 average in this spot. Strike one into the slider to get it. Yeah, Will's looking for the old number one to do some damage, and Scherzer spins that one up there to quickly get ahead. Strike two. So this is the 15th game in which Scherzer has hit multiple batters in an outing. He's never hit more than two, but he's hit two in this inning. Seventieth pitch of the night for Scherzer. Time call. He has not thrown him a fastball this at bat. Two breaking balls. He could do one of two things down and away, go up the ladder, but a fastball, if he's going to throw it to him, I don't think it's going to be a strike if he throws it that heater. Myers fouls it back. There's the heater, and it yeah. was up at 96. And you know what? If taken, that, that touched the top of the zone. I think that was his intent. He wanted to go up and out of the zone a little bit, a little bit. And Will couldn't get to it, falling it off. 25th pitch of the inning is coming up. The hardest Scherzer has had to work at any point tonight in any inning. I'm looking down and away right here if I'm a hitter. In the dirt wow. and blocked there by Gomes, the veteran catcher, saving a run right there. Wow. Nice block by Jan Gomes. CRS, catcher's run saved on the slider. Off the glove, off the chest protector. See him square that shoulder around towards the infield, that right shoulder. One, two to Myers. Fouls it back and the battle continues. Wow, 98. Scherzer reaching back for a little extra. He's been 92, 94, 95, 94, bang, 98.
close pitch. 97 and missing. Two and two. We've seen this pitch called a strike tonight. We've seen balls off the plate farther than that called a strike tonight. And Scherzer does not get the call. That is a ball. Bases filled with Friars. One out here in the fourth inning. 2-2 two, two to Myers. Full count. Friar Faithful will come to their fate at Petco Park in San Diego. Myers pokes it foul down the right field line. Ninth pitch of this plate appearance coming up. Look out, down goes Myers. That was a slider, and that is ball four. That'll bring in a run from third comes Machado. What a play appearance that was for Myers. It's the first walk allowed by Scherzer. After trying to go down and away, down and away, this slider just leaks up and in. Great plate appearance for Will Myers. One on, one off. Brings up Victor Caratini. Bases reloaded as Myers just got credit for an RBI on the bases loaded walk. Now Caratini single to left in the third. Takes ball one from Scherzer. And if nothing else, this pitch count is being driven up here big time in this inning. This pitch will be the 78th for Scherzer. He works here in the home half of the fourth inning. Ball two. Strike call. Wow. And that was not a strike. Not even close. <laughs> wow. On the corner of fourth and K. Pitch 80 for Scherzer. Two and two. Thirty fifth pitch of this inning is coming up. And Morena is on deck right now for the Padres there. Pitcher. Foul to the screen. The fastball and it's still two and two. Grisham at third, Hosmer at second base, Myers at first. Full count.
Finnegan's up in the pen. Fryer faithful up at Petco Park. Swing and a miss, and Scherzer strikes out Caratini. Seventh strikeout for Scherzer. Two down in the fourth inning. Challenge him with the fastball. Outer half. Scherzer wins that one. Camarena bats for himself. They need length from him yep, that's as a pitcher. It's a tough spot. Bad timing, right, Don? Is what it is. Yeah. Base is loaded. And he'll take strike one. Brought up to be the long guy. And down eight to nothing at one point in this game. And your starter out, you need him to go away. Yep. Especially with what you just went through last night. Fly ball, sent foul down the left field line, has him down 0 and 2. Grisham at third, Hosmer at second, Myers at first with two down. Two runs in here for the Padres in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ball one. Threw a change up there. Camarena to deep right field. Camarena plays it. Slam Diego. Are you kidding me? The Padres pitcher that is brought up from El Paso, the San Diego kid, to a grand slam. That's unbelievable. Off Max Scherzer. Unbelievable. That's the baseball. That will probably be coming back. No one pitch will miss to fan. I think this crowd is absolutely stunned. I know I am. I almost fainted. His family is in attendance here at the ballpark tonight. What a moment this has to be for them. Line down the right field line. That's headed to the corner. Fans got extra bases. Soto digs it out of the corner, but he'll stand at second with a double. This place is alive. It's going to be it for Scherzer. We're going to knock him out of this game. Max Scherzer with an 8 0 lead is going to leave this game in the fourth inning. That guy's part of the reason that Scherzer is leaving. It's a two-run ball game from San Diego. It's 8-6 now. 
this ballpark, and as everyone in this ballpark is, he's rattled. What just happened? I'll tell you what happened. He missed with a fastball down and away, down and in, and now we know the hot zone of Daniel Cameron. I don't think he realized what he had done. John, you mentioned his family is in attendance. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. How awesome is that? Somebody better check on dad. Well, the guy that got it all started is at the plate, Tatis Homer, to begin this inning. This is 28th of the year, and it started the inning for the Padres. They have batted around here in the fourth. Kyle Finnegan in for Scherzer. Foul back to the screen. Finnegan, uh, whew, he's got a two seamer slider, a split finger. Enters his 35th game, mid 90s. We just saw mid 90s right there. We saw him on Tuesday night out of the pennant through an inning, gave up a hit. Boy, Max Scherzer still shaking it off. Yep. It's got to be tough. Yeah. I mean, he's not used to this. Especially with the 8 nothing lead that yeah. he had. And you're thinking from the national standpoint, pitcher spot, they want length, they're not going to pinch hit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of this inning. Yeah, once he got by Caratini, he had to figure, okay, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Instead, here's a grand slam. This one is fouled back to the screen. Well, Fernando with 28. Most home runs hit before the All Star break, age 22 or younger. Tatis with the most home runs by a shortstop before the break, period. Two two pitch in the air shallow right back is Bell Soto coming in it's gonna fall fans gonna score it's a one run game That run is charged to Scherzer. Make it seven. Unraveling here in the fourth. Way out in front. Gets under it. Now it's a matter of communication. Big crowd here tonight. Bell. I don't see any communication. Though. That's Soto's ball. He's going to take charge on that. It's a base hit. It's an RBI. And it's a one-run game. And you and I are going to be headed on a long walk. <laughs> Lace them up. Strike one to Jake Cronenworth. 0 for 2 in this game. Lined out to center, struck out swinging. That was all against Scherzer. Uh, 
fouled off to the left out of play. Padres have put a seven spot on the board so far here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Their pitcher has hit a grand slam off Max Scherzer. He's charged with the seven runs. They're all earned. Fernando takes off for second base. The pitch is high. The throw. Not in time. Stolen base for Fernando Tatis Jr. He's a 2020 man before the break. That's his 20th stolen base. Twenty twenty before the break. That's unbelievable. For Fernando. That's great. Just the 15th player in Major League history to have accomplished that before the break. Add more history. One two pitch. Cronworth got a piece. Gonna take a while to uh, process all this. Yeah. What we just saw. A lot going on. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and again, it started with Tatis's home run to begin the inning, but the highlight of the inning, the grand slam for Camarena. <laughs> to left field, Harrison going towards the corner will make the catch. The inning is over, but not before the Padres score seven times. Camarena and the Padres get to Scherzer. How about a grand slam? After all, this is Slam Diego. It's 8 7, and it's time to check out the T Mobile coverage cam. Oh, that's good coverage. That is tremendous coverage. Camarena back to the hill as we start the fifth inning. It's a brand new ball game now. And Starling Castro will lead it off for the Nationals. This has to be as stunning to the Nationals position players as it is to Scherzer. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Big time rattle. Yeah. Big time. I didn't see this coming. And, you know, you, you talk about Max Scherzer and what he has done this season. Um, there was one time he gave up five earned runs. That was the most. That was back at Toronto back in April. What a half inning for San Diego. Popped up right side of the infield. Jake Cronenworth will make the catch for out number one. Well, don't forget the MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to Petco Park. Buy and manage game tickets. Play games. Order drinks to your seat and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. One out in the fifth, and Jan Gomes, one for two in this game, had a two run single in the first inning. Fly to right in the third. Strike one. Well now things change a little bit. I mean you were looking for Camarena to give you a lot of innings because it was eight to nothing. Now you're in a, a close game here as that gets a big piece of carotene. And he is in some real pain. Oh, off the hand. Bare off the hand. Thumb, yeah. Just didn't, oh man. Just didn't have it behind his foot enough and it caught the thumb of his throwing hand.
Oh, real boy. Okay. I'm sure he's got no feeling in that thumb, no, along with the, the pain. Yeah. yeah. Webster Rivas is ready to go. You can tell he's on call right now. CB Buckner checking on Caratini. He's going to stay in the game for now. You know, Don, you were talking about Camarena yeah, and how the, it changes the, now yeah. because of the game score. You get stamina up all of a sudden in the pen. Yeah. I nope. mean, everything's changed here completely. Yeah, and the last time that uh, Craig Stammen threw was on the first night of the series on Monday. Of course, last night, Chris Matter Ramirez. So the night prior, Adams, Pagan, Hill, Pomerantz, Melanson. So, boy, if you can get one, depending on how he throws here, you know, this inning here, a zero. Looking pretty good. That's strike three. Gump strikes out. That's the second strikeout for Camarena. That's the curveball, and it's a good one from Daniel Camarena. Down and in. There is Stammen. He is ready. Should they go in his direction? But right now, Camarena doing just fine. There's two outs in the fifth and a fly ball the other way on the move is Myers he'll get there. So one two three fifth we're halfway through it's eight seven Washington. The Nationals have an eight seven lead we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Camarena with two innings of relief and fresh off a seven pitch one two three fifth inning. And his grand slam, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> is the biggest part of his outing in this ball game tonight. Let's send it to Bob Scanlon. Scan. Don, thank you so much. In a stadium that's packed with excited Padre fans, I might be in the place with the most excited Padre fan of all, the brother of Daniel Camarena, Louis Camarena. Louis, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, this moment, I mean, your whole family was jumping up and down. Your mother Consuelo sitting next to you, but you've been the most vocal so far since I've gotten here. How exciting a moment is this, not only to see your brother pitching in the big leagues after 11 years in the minor leagues, but to have this moment, a grand slam home run against Max Scherzer. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's what dreams are made of. Uh, Daniel's just such a great guy, he works so hard. He, he represents perseverance and, and love for the game. and. Uh, couldn't happen to a better kid, you know. He's just a really special guy. Now you're the older brother. You said that you spent a lot of time with him, working with him. His father passed away a few years ago, unfortunately, not able to enjoy this moment. But talk a little bit about some of the time and effort that you put in working with him. Yeah, yeah. Dad, dad passed away uh, in February of 19, and so uh, I know he's here with us. He's a part of it all. Um, we worked real hard for a lot, a lot, many years. Uh, little league, travel ball. Uh, we went at it. We, my mom and dad bought a batting cage, uh, and, and that's all we did. And so um, it's just very, very rewarding, and it feels very beautiful to be living this moment, honoring mom, dad, our family, all our friends, the community, doing it here in our hometown. I, I just, you, you can't script it. You just can't script it. So. so we've had several people come up. One of them was his high school catcher, and the first thing he said to you is, we knew this was going to happen. There was a story that he almost hit a home run here previously. Yeah, yeah, back in the Aflac game, back in 2011, he was a two-way guy going into the draft. A lot of teams were on him as a, as a hitter, not, uh, as a pitcher as well. Um, he hit a ball that came up a little short. They've since moved the fence in, but I think this one uh, would have gotten out uh, either way. So. Uh, uh, he did it. He did it. We talked about getting that done and uh, w what dramatic fashion to do it. You know, I just Matt Sir, Max Scherzer, uh, you know, just, just such a special moment for Daniel. How special was it for you guys to be able to experience his major league debut here? He played at Cathedral 11 years later for him to be able to pitch here for the Padres and have his debut here and for all of you guys to be able to enjoy it. Tremendous. Again, just, just what movies are made of. Um, after so many years in the minors, you know, you have moments where, you know, it's the grind is real. Uh, but we've never doubted and we've always believed. And um, I, I, I'm almost lost for words. It's just, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. And to anyone out there who uh, is, uh, you know, having troubles with their dream, stick with it, believe in it. You know, I mean, it, it, they do come true. 
you looked so excited when that home run happened. We could hear you, we could see you bending down, you were going crazy. Where do you think that ball is going to go? Because there's no doubt you guys are going to negotiate and get it back. Oh, absolutely. But that, that's that's all Daniel. Daniel, uh, he's very uh, adamant about certain things, and I know that he probably already has his mind made up where that goes. And so um, I'm sure he'll have a special spot, you know. But the memory will live in our heart and in the moment and just – this is incredible, incredible. Really an incredible moment. Thanks so much for sharing the time with us. Congratulations to you, to your, your mother, Consuela, the rest of the Camarena family. We appreciate the time. Here's mom. Mom, how, how, how excited are you about this moment? Oh, so excited. I mean, oh, I mean, he's worked so hard, so dedicated to his career. I mean, it's just amazing. To see him out here on, the, on this big league field, but then also see him hit the home run because he just came up a few feet short in the Aflac game, I understand. Oh, yes. I, I knew he had it in him. But, you know, um, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm just so grateful, so grateful for everything. Enjoy the moment. You guys have deserved it. Thanks so much for the time. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Don Mudd, back up to you. Thanks very much. That is so awesome. Oh, my gosh. What a great moment for his family. Glad they were here. Chopped right side and going to first is Castro in the shift and retired is Grisham. And the Padres as that is out number two. You know, you think about this season. Of course, the local kid Joe Musgrove throwing the no-hitter. That's top for me. But also the local kid Daniel Camarena. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hit the grand slam off Max Scherzer of all pitchers. Here is Hosmer, who has flied to left and been hit by a pitch, came around to score the fourth Padres run in this comeback. In there for a strike. So the Nationals getting into their bullpen in the fourth inning. Finnegan was able to finish off the fourth. He has got the first two outs here of the fifth inning. Foul down the left field line out of play. And now a quick word from Fix Auto. In 2021, supporting your community means supporting local businesses. Fix Auto Collision Centers want you to know that they're locally owned and operated. Call or click to find a body shop near you. Two down, fifth inning. Hosmer down to the count, one and two. So that line on Scherzer, three and two thirds, five hits, seven runs, all earned. He walked one, struck out seven. Ended up throwing 91 pitches in three and two thirds. Very high for ball two. The Nationals in the fourth inning ended up throwing 55 pitches. Scherzer 45 of them in that inning. Finnegan with 10. Yeah, he was off his location, but uh, that one down and in was the great location for Camarena, I'll tell you that. Chopped right side. It's at Escobar. And it's out number three. We head to the sixth inning in San Diego. It's 8 7 Nats. Valley Sports presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by your San Diego County Toyota dealers, by Circa Resort and Casino, and by BMW Encinitas. Check out one of the largest selections of new and certified pre owned BMWs in San Diego at BMW Encinitas and Vista. Camarena's family elated, as was the rest of the Friar Faithful <laughs> here at Petco Park. Unbelievable. Place is still stunned. Yes. Still a buzz. Yep. 
It's on to the sixth inning, and a new pitcher for the Padres, Craig Stammen, comes in. Ah, uh, the workhorse out of the Padres' pen. He'll take the ball anytime. And here in the sixth, enters his 38th game. 2.90 ERA. One of the reasons why this Padre bullpen is first in Major League Baseball with an ERA of 291. So for two has popped out a short struck out swinging. One hopper will head out to Cronenworth who throws out Robles. One out in the sixth. Is six in a row retired by Padres pitching. And with the pitcher spot due, looks like Gadiel Hernandez will pinch hit. He has done this in every game. Two thirty seven two homers four runs batted in. Are you ready for this there's all kinds of stuff coming out as sure. far as the historic home run that this was grand slam that this was. So he hits a grand slam off Scherzer in the fourth inning. The only other pitcher in Major League history whose first career hit was a grand slam was Bill Duggleby, April 21st of 1898 with the Phillies. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> 18 yeah. what? 1898. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up the middle and off of Fernando. Oh, his throw will be late and wild, backed up by Caratini. It's an E6 on Tatis. In the shift, one hopper, two hopper, yep, right in front of him. And thank goodness Caratini backing up. They may have kept it from the dugout. Yeah. He is like right at the opening of the dugout where the stairs are, yep. where he backs this up. Goes in the dugout, he gets another base. So Fernando charged with an error and the top of the order. Cedis Escobar, 1 4 3. Strike one. Yeah, some more slam stuff for you too. The slam was the fifth of the season for the Slam Diego Padres. Already the yes. fifth. Yes, and that is the twelfth Grand Slam since the beginning of 2020 when Slam Diego all began. So there you go. <laughs> That's twelve. So yeah, in a year uh, and a half. So, and, uh, well, not even a year. Well, because we, we need uh, we need T-shirts made. Slam Diego established. Yes, 2020. 2020. Yeah. You know, it'd be cool, like, you know, when you enter a city on the highway, it has a sign. <laughs> Welcome to Slam Diego. Yeah, somebody put underneath it. <laughs> Slam Diego, you know, San Diego, a million to whatever yeah. population. Slam Diego established 2020. <laughs> and then the number of Grand Slams since then, 12. Yeah. Somebody get on that. <laughs> oh, no one to Escobar. Fouled into the Nationals dugout. Of course, they're housed on the third base side of Petco Park. That scattered them down there. Well, you know what, Donnie? I'm ready to walk. I'm telling you. I'm ready to walk. It looks like it's on. Let's go, Friars. Go 
on first stand back to the bag is Hernandez. Well it looks like Victor Caratini has thrown that ball back to Stammen with some authority so that's a good sign remember he yep. had the foul tip off that throwing hand thumb. It looks like he is good to go. So if the Nationals put runners in motion to try to test Caratini possibly. On the ground left side is short Fernando will go to second for one on the first it'll be late. And they do get the lead runner in Hernandez six to four in the four south. As Escobar reach a first base with two down in the inning. Well, here comes Trey Turner. He's got two home runs in this ball game. First one came in the first inning. First hit of the night for either side. And it's off you, Darvish. And then Turner would come up in the fourth inning with a runner on, a two run shot to straightaway center field. Home run 16 and 17 for Trey Turner. On the ground this time to Tatis. Tough hop. Stays with it. Goes to second for the force out. That will end the inning. Five and a half deep from San Diego. It's 8 7 Nats. 8 to 7 Nationals on top of the Padres as we move to the bottom half of the sixth inning back at Petco Park in San Diego. And it's time now to grab the answer to our Valley View Casino trivia question. The last Padres pitcher to have 10 or more wins at the All Star break was. Matt Latos, you got it. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, 10 and 4 at the break in 2010. Boy, Matt Latos, you know, there are certain things you remember about certain pitchers, and he was an over the top guy, and when he had, he had that good downward playing too. When he had his stuff working, man, he was unhittable. Very close to throwing a no hitter in San Francisco. He gave up a late infield hit, I believe, but uh, did not walk away with that no hitter, obviously. But when he was on, he was nasty. Under Suero into the game now for the Nets. A lot of cutters from the right-hander Suero. Oh, with a changeup, curveball, and a four-seamer. Enters his 30th game. And we saw Suero in the first game of the series on Monday night. That was in the sixth inning, pitched an inning. He struck out two. 24 strikeouts in 24 innings. Well, Myers to lead it off. He was a big part of the fourth inning. He drew a walk and picked up an RBI with the bases loaded. They kept that inning going for the Padres and chased Scherzer from the game. Not a great sign for Victor Caratini as Webster Rebos has come out on deck. He would bat yeah. for Caratini. Myers shows bunt, pulls it back, takes ball one. There is Rivas. Caratini got hit on the bare hand on a foul tip. It looked like it really hurt. Myers will bunt it foul. So Finnegan goes two innings. Check that. Goes an inning. And a third. One hit, no runs, no walks, and no strikeouts. And I guess right now, as of now, would be the pitcher of record for the moment. Scherzer obviously didn't go the minimum right. to make himself eligible, going three and two thirds. Ball two, two and two. Donnie, I might need a tee uh, after, oh, after screaming after yeah. that uh, that Daniel Camarena grand slam. I've already had mine, so I don't know what I'm going to do. There is both up in the pen. Inside. Did he want that pitch? That was so far inside. Did you see his reaction. Yep. Feels he's getting squeezed. Oh. 
Myers out towards left center field. It's a gapper. Up and over. It's a double. Good start to the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, full count, you look for the fastball, and this is a cutter that's just kind of flat. What a nice swing. Well, when you know it's coming, you look for it, you get it. Put your perfect swing on it. And the rule book double for Will Myers. Webster Rivas. Bunting and popping it up foul back and out of play. You got the pitcher spot due next. That would be Stammen, and it is Profar who has come out on deck. Lead off double by Will Myers. Tying run in scoring position with nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Squaring again. Offering at it again. 0 oh and 2. Well, since the Padres have been a home run in tonight's game, got a couple in fact. You get a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with a purchase of a large drink. The action of the pen is Pierce Johnson. So they got a hit for Stammen in this inning. Look out. Look out. Watch your face. Uncomfortable at bat, you bet. When you got one coming up with the noggin, and then you got a guy who could possibly dot with a cut fastball down away. That's a cut oh, right over the head as he squats to get out of the way of that one. On the ground to short. Turner looked at third but goes to first for the out. And credit Myers for getting there quickly at third base. Turner was going to try to get the lead runner but cannot. And he does get him over as it turns out. Tying run 90 feet away. Yeah, that ball was hit hard enough to where. Turner could have probably gotten over there, but Will Myers got a good jump on that. As soon as that ball was struck, let's watch Will. As soon as it hit, he's going. And for Turner's standpoint, get the shore out, and he does just that. So here comes Profar. Jim Nicky back to the dugout. Off the bench into the game. They're going to shift three wide on the right side here, and they're all going to be tight to the lip of the grass for the Nationals defensively. 235, a home run, 20 runs batted in. Out and in for ball one. Popped up. Down from first comes Bell, makes the catch. Two down. That's a huge out for Suero. Is that not the perfect scenario for the Washington Nationals in that situation there? Suero makes that. That's what makes the cutter so effective, especially to a left-handed hitter. You, you get in on him a little bit. He got the pop up. Kept it on the infield. 
pitching change with two down here in the sixth inning. With Tommy Pham coming up here. It is eight to seven. Nationals have the lead. The pitching change from Petco Park in San Diego. Two outs and a runner at third. Well, baseball's two biggest events of the summer back to back. The action begins at the T Mobile Home Run Derby on ESPN July the 12th at 5 p.m. Pacific. Then catch baseball's biggest stars at the 91st MLB All Star Game presented by MasterCard July 13th on Fox. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Pacific. So Tommy Pham is about to come up here in a very big spot with a tying run 90 feet away, two down in the inning. And into the game is Austin Both. We saw Austin both in game one of the series on Monday he, in the eighth inning, he went an inning, one strikeout, four seamer curveball cutter and a split finger. Enters his 29th game. Opponents hitting 218 off the right hander. He has tossed scoreless relief in eight of his last 10 games for Austin both. All right, so here comes Tommy Pham with Myers at third base, two down in the inning. Pham struck out in the first, struck out in the third. All that was against Scherzer before he doubled in the fourth inning. Ball 2 2 0. Oh. Big spot here for Tommy Pham in the sixth inning. Padres at one point in this game trailed 8 to nothing. It is 8 to 7 with a tying run at third. Cranks it foul off to the right out of play. Two one to fam. Let's see arms out of the way. It takes a pitch inside. Fernando Tatis Jr. You saw waiting on deck. First day three one here to fam. In the air to center field. Robles going back. It's going to be over his head. What ups the wall from third comes Myers. Oh, this game, this game is tied. Padres trail made nothing. Not anymore. The fighting Friars for Seamer. And Tommy Pham is all over it. It's our top two play presented by Arco. Fernando with a swing and a miss for strike one. Now the go-ahead run. The in scoring position out there at second base in fam. Fernando with two hits tonight. The home run in the fourth inning was a his 28th and a solo shot. And the single in the fourth inning with a stolen base. And with that stolen base, picked up his 20th. Of the year, so he's a 2020 guy before the break. Add another chapter to the book of Fernando Tatis Jr. in his young career. One and two, and the cutter that time. Yeah, both keeping the ball away, fastballs away, breaking balls away, that cutter in particular.
One two pitch. Very high. Two and two. Padres have raced a five run deficit in the first game of the series. Tonight they erase an eight run deficit. Fernando strikes out 10 things in the sixth inning but the Padres get the tying run tied at eight to the seventh we go from San Diego. Valley Sports presents Padres baseball brought to you by Petco official partner of the San Diego Padres. And by Templeton Rye. Go to www.templetonsdbarrelclub.com to enter the $1 million barrel strength home run challenge. Well, it's been quite a night in San Diego for the Padres, who trailed 8 to nothing in this game. Not only did they trail 8 to nothing, but they were facing Max Scherzer for the Washington Nationals. They chased him from the game. They come all the way back to tie it up 8 to 8. And oh, by the way, they had a uh, pitcher called up from AAA El Paso from San Diego who hit a grand slam for his first major league hit as part of this come from behind situation as we move on to Pierce Johnson. The great thing about this uh, great game of baseball that we all love is that you never know what you're going to see when you come to the ballpark. And uh, that's evident tonight. Enter Pierce Johnson. We got a whole new brawl game here tied up at eight. Now the key is to. Break this tie, hold on to the lead, and send everyone home happy. Here is Soto. The lead it off, three, four, and five for the Nationals. And Soto skies one foul down the left field line out of play. Mr. Rivas scores to pinch hit for Caratini, stays in for him behind the dish. Soto two for three, two singles. He has scored two runs. Foul down the left field line again, and it's one and two. So Stammen went an inning, giving up no hits, no runs, didn't walk anybody, nor did he strike anybody out. And obviously, you Darvish is uh, off the hook in this one. He gave up six runs in three innings. It was very on you Darvish like oh, to. Oh yeah, he was off of the location. The Nationals were hitting mistakes. And then all of a sudden the tide turned on Max Scherzer. He wasn't hitting his spots. They dropped a seventh spot in the fourth. Up and away there. Two and two. He's a sinker that did not sink. Two two to Soto. Padres shifting on him on the right side, and it's sliced foul. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Snap it, Donnie. Two two pitch coming up here to Soto. That's going to miss full count. You know you said was it last night how mm -hmm. you've never snapped in the booth. 
Right. You've been snapping with regularity the last <laughs> what about three weeks. Yeah. And doing it quite well. With the paper snap. Yeah. But I haven't got the chance to break any stuff. You don't have to. No. No. It's all good. How about break this tie for the Friars. How about a fresco. <laughs> Three two pitch. And another foul off to the left out of play. How about this crowd tonight which started off certainly very quiet nothing to cheer about down eight nothing. Boy did they come to life in a huge way and the electricity in this ballpark this season and 2021 has been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's this crowd man I, I look forward to coming obviously to work every day with you and just the excitement of all this team but the crowd you know even tonight um, everybody in unison got up out of their, their seats and just started yelling and screaming it's it's just been fantastic. This is my sixth season already yeah. and I never knew that this place could be this way yeah. this loud. It's amazing. Yeah. Thanks Slam Diego. Absolutely. 3 2 pitch coming up. And that's ball four. Oh, what a lengthy at bat that was. A walk, played appearance down to first base goes Soto. Not what Pierce Johnson wanted to do is this game is just been tied up. Now the lead runner on for the Nationals. And Josh Bell coming up. Flat out to center in the first, doubled and scored in the third. Rounded back to the mound of the fourth inning. Strike one. Okay. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh Bell a little upset. You can see why. Why not go back up there again? You may get it sure. again. Sure. It wasn't all that far off from the last one. Top foul, one and two. So should we start calling uh, him Daniel Slam Arena? <laughs> <laughs> Come up with a dance, the slam arena. One two pitch is car foul off to the left out of play. Lead off walk to Juan Soto to begin things here in the seventh inning. It's his lead held on by Hosmer. On the ground is short, could be two. There's one, there's two. Oh, what a great combination. Tatis Cronenworth up the middle. You know, being a baseball fan, that combination in the American League for so many years, Trammell the Whitaker. Be nice to see Tatis Cronenworth for a long, long time in Padre pinstripes. Castro goes around for strike one. And doubled and scored in the first inning, hit a sacrifice fly in the third inning, and popped out to second base in the fifth. Drives one to center field on a line for a base hit. Christian plays it on a hop and Castro's on with two outs here in the seventh inning. First hit off Pierce Johnson. 
hanging breaking ball. That's the curveball. I wanted it down and away, and it's middle in. You see that Castro recognizes that, opens up, gets the hands through. Two outs, Castro at first. And Jan Gomes, one for three. Two runs single back in the first inning. He takes strike one. Rolled over foul. Off the fencing in front of the Nationals dugout third base way. Veteran catchers had a pretty good series for the Nationals. Up and in at 94. Set him up for that curveball down and away possibly. You can do one of two things heater down and away you can double up inside. Swing and a miss he elevates fastball at 96 seventh inning stretch all tied at eight star break a Padres will be matched up against the Colorado Rockies in the first of three Kyle Freeland will get a start for the Rockies as the Padres have not yet announced their starter for tomorrow Blake Snell May or may not be ready. In fact, I believe Chase Tingler before the ball game said that uh, he would not be going to go uh, tomorrow night in game one. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But we can tell you that it will be on the air with Padres live, the pregame show at 6 30. First pitch will be at 7. Padres and the Rocks. And hopefully the Padres come back and break this tie, win this one, gain some momentum as the Rocks come to town for that final weekend before the break. Liner to center. And the catch made in center. Victor Robles robs Cronenworth again. This is the third time. He has been incredible in center field. You know what? I, from I watched it from the booth here. I thought yep. I saw a trap possibly. Let's see. Oh, that's a. You know what? I think he gets his glove under. That's close, Donnie. Padres are challenging. You think that ball catches little grass? I don't. I, it, I don't think it does. I don't think it does either. Padres are challenging. See if he gets Sit the glove, the fingers underneath the ball. I, I don't think it does. I think that's a catch. I think he catches it. Wow, that is unbelievable. That's the third time he's done it to Cronenworth. All right, here we go. Out, call stands. So Cronenworth is out number one. Brings up Manny Machado. Yeah, struck out and hit by a pitch and grounded out to third base. Here he is in the seventh with the bases empty and one down. Both back on the mound here for this inning. And the pitch in there for strike one.
Machado grounds one towards third. Castro's got it. And there are two outs in the seventh inning. So two down, and that'll bring up Trent Grisham. What's worthy of a Carl's Cam replay? Center fielder Victor Robles been robbing Jay Cronenworth and the Padres this entire series. Jay Cronenworth has got to be talking to himself, and he's finally realizing that. <laughs> gotta go somewhere else. Yeah, you gotta hit the ball somewhere else, right? Yeah. Robles center field. playing a fantastic center field in this series. So I'm foul back in our general direction. Grisham tonight has flied out to center, single to center, came around to score, grounded out to third base. Rip foul. Very good thing there is a screen there nowadays. Yeah. And you know what? I am so glad. You know how many balls have we seen just oh, ripped yeah. down? I am so glad those screens are up. Yep. Me too. And you can hardly know that they're there. Yeah. I mean, we look behind one from home plate. Right. Can't even see it. You adjust, right? Absolutely. And you you, you want to think about the well-being of the fan oh. enjoying the game. Two pitch. And that'll bounce in. Two and two. One worth lining out to center. Great play by Robles. Machado grounded out to third base. And now Grisham with a count of two and two. The play in center by Robles kind of reminds me of the play that uh, Mookie Betts made here that yes. was looking like it was going to get some yep. grass. But uh, he made that catch to end the game. This one is fouled down the left field line out of play. I still think me Mr. Vegas Cha Cha Vegas. Yeah Cha Cha <laughs> Vegas. The best catch by center fielder is the one Jimmy Edmonds made in center field in St. Louis. It was the one I think he was with the Angels and he oh, was yeah. straight out and yep. he dove with his feet towards the he dove and yeah. he caught the ball. Incredible catch. Full count to Trent Christian with two outs in the seventh. Eric Cosmer waits on deck. Grisham down the right field line foul again. Oh, he cleaned that one out. That was inside, spinning on that one. Eighth pitch of this plate appearance coming up for Trent Grisham. He has fouled some off, taken some. It's been a good AB and see what he can work here with two outs in the inning. Popped up. Out goes Turner backpedaling to the outfield lawn to make the catch that takes us to the eighth inning from San Diego. Tied at eight. Here's our Bill Howe play of the game. Base is loaded in the bottom of the fourth. Daniel Camarena just up from the minors once again. His first big league hit a grand slam. Mike, so many moments in a, a spectacular season already for the Padres, but this one really takes the cake. Uh, his brother Louie, his mom Consuela, what a reaction that was. And uh, I think they're gonna look back at this moment, especially when they win this game and, and feel really good about that one. Boy, you hit that when you're down 8-2, that made it 8-6. It's now 8-8, eight, eight, top of the eighth. Mark and I working on Padres Live, the post game show brought to you by Cox Communications. What we see after the final out. 
We're going to weasel our way inside that clubhouse, try to get a hold of Daniel Camarena, sit him down, talk to him, find out just what's going through his mind. This has got to be the most electric day of his professional life. Let's get back up to Don Orsillo and Mark Grant. Don? Thanks very much, Mike and Mark. It's on to the eighth we go. And a new pitcher for the Padres, Emilio Pagan. We saw Emilio on Tuesday in this series, two thirds of an inning. He walked two, but no runs. Enters his 39th game. Got a brand new game, as mentioned before, tied up at 8 8, and your eighth inning guy. Josh Harrison to lead it off. A one for three night, had an RBI single back in the third inning. That went to center field. Off to the right out of play. Daniel Hudson is up in the pen now for the Nationals. Scherzer, Finnegan, Suero, and both have worked tonight on the hill for Washington. Amazingly, Scherzer charged with seven of the eight runs. Fouled off, and it's one and two. Pagan takes over for Pierce Johnson. What an inning, giving up a hit, no runs, walked about or struck out about it. And had a 6 4 3 DP mixed in there. Daniel Hudson, we saw him warming up, one of those integral parts of that bullpen for the Nationals that was on the IL with right elbow inflammation. So they got him back, trying to bolster that Nats bullpen. Oh. 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 Already lost Caratini for the night and Rebos, the catcher into this game, the only other catcher the Padres have. Right off the shoulder. Oh. Emergency catcher would be Cronenworth. Jake says that he's the third catcher. That's what Jake says. I mean, he can pitch, he can catch, he can do everything. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me, is what I should say. Struck him out. First out of the eighth inning. Bring him the gas. Four seamer. Outer third at 95. One out in the eighth, and Victor Robles. 0 4 3. He has popped out to short, struck out, grounded out. And has made some amazing catches in center field, not only tonight, but in this series. Went after that one for strike one. Grounded foul outside a third. Ryan Zimmerman has come out on deck. We've only seen him one other time in the series pinch hit. And has not started any of the games. Remember, he smoked that ball that Fernando Tatis Jr. made that spectacular leaping play at shortstop. Mm -hmm. Ball one. So Zimmerman would be batting in the pitcher's spot. Or both. Again, Hudson up in the pen right now for the Nats. Gone ahead one and two of Victor Robles.
struck him out back to back strikeouts for Pagan in the eighth. Another four seamer outer half just like Harrison. He's got that located fastball working very well here in the eighth. So here is Zimmerman. 247, nine homers, 24 runs batted in into his 59th game of the year. There's strike one. Well, the face of the franchise, Ryan Zimmerman, Nationals all time leader in virtually every offensive category. Returns to the Nationals after opting out of the 2020 season. Grounds it foul over by the Nationals dugout, and he was robbed on Monday by Fernando Tatis Jr. going up into the air and in the air with a swim move to get even higher. Unbelievable catch. Just when you, here's John's reaction was priceless. And just when you think you've seen it all, defies gravity. Yeah. He went. No. Oh boy. I know what you think. I don't even have to ask you, but I'm pretty sure he went. Oh, <laughs> most definitely. No question. One two pitch. That's away and it's two and two. There's more action of the Padres pen. Tim Hill is up. Popped up right side Hosmer onto the infield grass makes the catch that sends us to the bottom of the eighth inning tied at eight from San Diego to the bottom of the eighth inning back at Petco Park in San Diego the Padres in this game trailed eight to nothing came in all the way back to tie it up eight to eight and we head to the bottom of the eighth inning and Daniel Hudson into the game now. Veteran right hander, he's been around the block, four seam fastball, slider, and a changeup. Throws that four seam, he relies on it quite a bit, almost three quarters of the time. And when you look at the velocity, he's still get it up there at 97. He was on the IL for a while with right elbow inflammation back on June 12th, retro to June 10th, and just reinstated yesterday. Cosmer will lead it off. And Myers and Riva scheduled to bat here in the inning. Six, seven, and eight for the Padres. Expected in the eighth. Lined into right field, a base hit. Good start to the bottom of the eighth inning for San Diego. First pitch for Hosmer cleaning it out as Hudson tries to get ahead with that first pitch fastball. Get the hands through, get the barrel out in front to the pull side. There it is. He was hunting the fastball and he got it. That one was barreled up. Lead runner on for the Padres here in the eighth. Here's Will Myers.
Fouled off to the right out of play. Most run scored seventh inning or later Padres with 151 second only to the Cincinnati Reds in that category late life late drama yeah stay tuned call a friend Josh Bell holding on Eric Hosmer at first base. That's away and it's one and one. Myers struck out in the third. He walked and scored in the fourth. His walk came to the bases loaded, so he picked up an RBI. Where he doubled and scored to tie the game. Scored the eighth Padres run, and here we are, eight to eight in the bottom of the eighth. Fastball away, drive it that way. Oh. Fouls it off to the right. That's an easy 98 from Daniel Hudson. Yeah, it is. Hudson was in Arizona from 2011 to 2016. This is year three in Washington. In the dirt, and it's two and two. Broken in the big leagues with the White Sox in 2009. Since Arizona, Pittsburgh, the Dodgers, Blue Jays, and now the Nationals. Veteran working the eighth fresh off the IL. Swing and a miss, and Myers strikes out for the first out of the eighth inning, unable to advance the base runner. Firm fastball, 98. Really good slider down and away. This is Daniel Hudson, who has bounced back twice from Tommy John surgery. Two times. One on, one out for Rebser Rebos. One for six in this series. Rounded out to short in his first AB. Now sends one to right field. Soto has it sized up and makes the catch for out number two. Back to first goes Hosmer. And a base hit to begin the inning. Still at first with two down. Pinch hitter is going to be Hassan Kim. Kim is the Padres remaining bench player. Well, if you're going to look for the first pitch fastball, you got to get it started early against a guy like Hudson. Strike one. Short sighted. Ball one, one, and one. Yeah, Hosmer the base hit first pitch he sees to begin things in the eighth but Myers strikes out. Rebos flies out to right. And Hassan Kim pinch hits here. Ball two.
He's got to be thinking right field with that big hole on that right side, the 98 mile an hour heater. Looks like he's going to come inside here, though. Strike two. Wow. That's tough to catch up to right there. There's that hole on the right side I was talking about. Now with two strikes, it looks like Escobar maybe two steps to his left. Bounces in, ball three. Osmer can get a start at first base with two down and a full count. Tommy Pham hoping to get a chance here in the last of the eighth. Kim pops it up. First base way. Josh Bell back into fair ground to make the catch that sends us to the ninth inning in an 8 8 ball game from San Diego. Night at Petco Park in San Diego. Eight to eight as we move to the ninth inning, and the Padres are going to bring in their closer here in a tie game at home in Mark Melanson. So, with the save out the window, the Padres can win it in walk off style. The last time out for Melanson was Tuesday night against these same Nationals. He went an inning, enters his 37th game, made to his fourth career All Star team on Sunday. Leaves the majors in saves as Don mentioned not a save situation opponents hitting 2 14 off of Mark Melanson. Cedis Escobar to lead it off. It is the top of the Nationals order. Both for three with the strikeout against Melanson in his career. On the ground at first base, Hosmer picks it on the backhand for out number one. One pitch, one out. And if you wonder if we were to get to bonus baseball and Melanson has a quick ninth, whether he would come back out for the tenth. I don't know. Stay tuned. There's Trey Turner. 0 for 8, two strikeouts in his career against Melanson. Big inning right here for Melanson. This part of the Washington Nationals order. Although 0 for 8. Regroup. Trey Turner with two home runs in this game. Three hits total, three RBIs. That was a pretty good pitch, just a little bit low, apparently. Down to one knee for strike one. That's a that's a good yacker from Melanson. First one just missed and he went right back to it. Here's the knuckle curve. Nose to toes. It'll bring it to your knee. Strike two. Back to back. Throw him another one here. Why not? Triple up. See, yeah, see, the beauty of this sequence is that, you know, as a hitter, oh, I got, the, he's got that nasty curveball. But yet again, you try to sneak a fastball up and out of the zone, maybe, maybe up. Got to get it up out of the zone where you can't get hurt. 
Swing and a miss. Swing and a foul. Got a piece. And, Just a piece. And it was the curveball again. Did he get a piece of that? That was hard to tell. Yeah. Live, I didn't think so. Two and two. Another curveball. Bouncing in for ball three, and all of a sudden you get a full count. He's ahead 0 2. Juan Soto next. He has gone back into the dugout for something. I'll tell you what, in the Mark Davis is going on this at bat. I saw Mark Davis, the Cy Young Award winner, 1989, throw 14 curveballs in a row. All curveballs to Turner this at bat. Line to center, Grisham coming in to make the catch for out number two. Solidly hit the right to Grisham. Two down in the ninth inning, Juan Soto coming up. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth inning for the Padres, top of the order. Tommy Pham, Fernando Tatis Jr., Jay Cronenworth, anybody gets on, Manny Machado. Two down in the top of the ninth, and Soto. Takes strike one. Well, you got Clay up and you have the closer, Brad Hand up, former Padres closer. Sam Clay, we saw in the first couple of games of the series. Brad Hand, we saw earlier in this four game series. Depends what the situation is. Oh, and two. He's baffled on that. Changed his mind in the middle, but couldn't hold up. Two outs and two strikes on Soto bring the Friar faithful to their feet again. Inside one and two. Soto very animated, is he not? He is. A lot of movement, a lot of stuff going on. Choking up on the bat, you can see him right there. Wanting some bat control with two strikes. Downstairs for ball two. You know he's had a couple of hits in the shortstop area and as we look out there especially with two strikes Manny Machado Fernando Tatis Jr. in that general area where he has gotten those two base hits on the left side. Ball three full count. So he was ahead of Turner or two head of Soto. 0 oh and 2, but it has gone full. With two outs, bases empty here in the top of the ninth inning. 
And Josh Bell waiting on deck for the Nats. So down to first with the walk goes Soto. Go ahead run aboard with two outs in the ninth inning for the Nats. And that'll give Josh Bell a chance. Lance got ahead but could not put him away. Here against Melanson, just 0 for 1. The one part is a strikeout. Watch that first pitch. Bell hitting 412. He likes to offer that first pitch. Bouncing in, not close for ball one. Very important for Webster Rivas behind the plate. To keep that breaking ball in front of him. Ground ball in the infield. Potteries can go the short way to second base to get out of this inning. Bell lines one. Caught! It's second base! He hit it to the crowd zone! And Cronenworth says no. You can hit it anywhere, but don't hit it at the crown zone. Egan came up from El Paso. Pitched a couple innings. Oh, he hit a grand slam. Off of Max Scherzer. <laughs> it's as you keep going. It's unbelievable. You think there are people out there that say, call a buddy or a friend. They say, hey, you'll never guess what happened in the Padre game tonight. <laughs> They're down 8 nothing. To Max Scherzer. <laughs> well, Sam Clay is in the game now for the Nats as we head to the bottom of the ninth. Sam Clay pitched on Tuesday night in the fifth, two thirds of an inning, two hits, and a strikeout. This guy can roll the ground ball with the best of them. 36th game for the left hander, although opponents hitting 297 off of Sam Clay. Tommy Pham to lead it off in the ninth inning. Ball one. Two hit night for Fam. Including the double in the sixth inning that tied this game, scoring Myers from second. In fact, both of his hits are doubles. Fam lines it into right field, a base hit to start things in the bottom of the ninth. Good start. You have to get Sam Clay up in the zone. He's 60% ground ball rate. Average is about 46%, so he's working down, right? This one, outer half, you have to go the opposite way. Tommy Pham does that so well. What a way to start the ninth here for the Padres. Pham's third hit of the night. Here's Fernando. Ball one. He'll throw that sinker about 70% of the time. Mix in the slider and a change up. But he relies on that two seamer. Chopped left side coming from third. Castro's throw. Gonna be close. Oh, just got him. That was really close.
Yeah, it's fan to second either way and into scoring position. And that is out number one. What a nice play by Castro. He's got to get rid of it. He knows the speed. Oh, that's close. Oh, that's close. But he gets him. Great hustle, as always, by Fernando. That's good stretch, too, by Bell. Yeah. Really nice play. Three for eight of the Padres with runners in scoring position. Jake Cronenworth. Ball one. And 0 for four night for Cronenworth. Robbed on two occasions by Victor Robles on great catches. One of the first and one more recently in the seventh. Makes a great catch of his own to end the top of the ninth inning. Isn't the script written to where Jake's got to come through here and win it right here? Ground ball right side. Escobar will go to first. Fam to third with now two down. Here comes Manny with the game in the balance, and they are going to intentionally walk him and take their chances with Grisham. Intentional walk of the no throw kind. Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, headed out. As Trent Grisham headed to the plate. That's your winning run 90 feet away for the Padres here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, we've seen uh, Trent Grisham this series swing at the first pitch on occasion. Boy, Jim Hickey doing a lot of the talking right here. Trent Grisham on that first pitch, a 524 average. 11 for 21. Winning run at third base in Tommy Pham. Clay has two wild pitches on the season, so be aware of that as well. Taking second, the defensive indifference is Machado. Takes and takes strike one. One and one, and a good block there by Jan Gomes. It's worth another look. Mentioned two on the year. Found his glove. Inside for ball two. Back and it's two and two. Fastball at 94 and fouled it back to even the count. Winning run in Fam at third base. Two two. 
Grisham grounds it foul and will do it again. Sam Clay gets a sign. It's 2 2. Ball three, full count, another nice play by Gomes. He has reeled in a few. Winning run. Grisham lines it into right. From third comes Fam. Padres trail the eight nothing. They walk it off. Nine eight. It's San Diego sending the Friar faithful into a frenzy. for the San Diego Padres. Oh, the swag chain's going to make its way out there before he gets on the headset. I can tell you that. You cannot do the interview without the swag chain, and you must spin it. Wear it proudly. Go, spin it. Let's send it out to Bob Scanlon. Don, thank you so much. Daniel, can you hear me? Awesome, man. Hey, congratulations. Normally we get the guy that hits the walk off, but you had one of the most important hits in this ball game tonight. What an improbable situation. Congratulations on getting called up to the big leagues today. Congratulations on your first hit. Congratulations on it being a grand slam home run to help forge this amazing comeback. Could you have dreamed of something like this happening tonight? No, I definitely couldn't have dreamed it. Um, just so electric out here. Padre fans are awesome. I love you guys. I mean, what a big, big win for us down at 8-0 to come back. That was that was awesome. Have you had a chance for this whole situation to sort of to absorb yet? Yeah, yeah, no. 1898 was the last time a pitcher had a first hit being a grand slam home run. And, you know, we had special moments earlier in the year by hometown boy Joe Musgrove getting the first no-hitter. Yeah. And now you, another hometown boy, putting together such an exciting moment. Has it had a chance to sink in yet? Little by little, little by little. Right now it's starting to sink in. It's, it's awesome. I'm just thankful to be here and thankful to help win. You know, help win. Walk us through the situation. Base is loaded. Max Scherzer on the mound. You're walking up to the plate. What's going through your mind right there? Just don't strike out. Put the ball in play and <laughs> don't strike out. <laughs> Walk us through the at-bat. Yeah, I mean, strike one, strike two, change up. I, you know, I'd laid off of it. And then after that, I was just hunting a fastball. You know, I just tried to put something in play and just give us a chance. And, man, I didn't think I would ever do that. When the ball leaves your bat, did you know right away, oh, my gosh, I think I got this one? No, honestly, when I hit first base and I saw the lights kind of flashing, that's when I realized I hit a home run. And it's been like 10 years since I've hit a home run. So that was that was crazy. Daniel, your family was here. They were going crazy. Your brother was special. We got a chance to talk to him during the ball game. He said that that's not the first time that you've almost hit a home run here at Petco Park, that you just came up a few feet short of the Aflac game when you were in high school. True, true. No, that's, that's true. And, I mean, that one felt way better than the Aflac game, so. 11 years you spent in the minor leagues to get to this moment. 
something like this, does it make it worth the wait? Oh, 100%. All the workouts, all the just everything, everything made it worth it in that moment right there. And to be able to share this moment in San Diego in front of your family and all these fans here in San Diego, how special is that? Can't beat it, guys. Can't beat it. Daniel, congratulations. You earned this moment. Enjoy it. Thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Great job. Mike Sweens, what a special night for Daniel Camarena. Back over to you. His entire family just want to listen to that crowd respond. The humility, so impressive, but what a swing for Daniel Camarena. What a memorable night. Coming up, Padres Live, the postgame show. Another hero, Trent Grisham. He'd walk it off in the bottom of the ninth inning with that line drive base hit. We'll relive all the excitement here from Petco in moments on Padres Live.